Hi, I'm Lauren Hirschap, inventor of the Brunton Axis Transit. This instructional video will focus on the measurement of directional bearings and vertical angles using the axis. First of all, before any directional measurements are made, make sure you adjust the graduated circle for magnetic declination at your particular area. Magnetic declination is the angle between geographic north, sometimes called true north, and the constantly changing magnetic north where your compass needle points. Magnetic declination changes with time and location, so it's important to find out what the current declination angle is for your location. There are many great websites that can do this. Do not just use the angle shown on your base map, as it may be very outdated and incorrect. Like other Brunton transits, the graduated compass circle is available in azimuth or quadrant formats and is adjustable for, for magnetic declination. To adjust for declination on the axis, First, loosen the locking screw on the compass base with one full rotation. Any more and you might lose it. Then, adjust the main black declination screw on the side to rotate the graduated circle counterclockwise for west declinations or clockwise for east declinations. Then remember to reset the locking screw on the compass base. So now let's talk about how to measure directional bearings with the axis. As I stated before in our getting oriented video, the axis doesn't require a mirror or sighting arm because it has a cool hollow sighting tube through which features can be sighted. The easiest configuration for sighting directional bearings is to rotate the lid to its 90 degree position. If you are sighting to an object that's relatively even with your eye height, you can keep the compass face locked into its default horizontal position. Bring the sighting tube close to one of your eyes and center the object you're sighting towards in the center of the sighting tube. For directional measurements, you'll want the needle to be in its default lockable state. So press and release the needle button three times to give the needle time to accurately reset at its new bearing. Then you can move the compass away from your face to read your new directional bearing off of the north seeking end of the needle. With this newer magnetic needle, the compass face doesn't actually have to be perfectly level for accurate bearing measurements to be made. So it's okay that you cannot see any levels when you're sighting through the tube. If desired though, you could move the sighting tube away from your face a little bit so that you can see one of the side vial levels. Or you can set up the axis on its tripod for survey grade accuracy. If survey grade accuracy is required for your directional bearings, you can mount the axis on Brunton's non-magnetic tripod, level the compass face, and sight your bearings through the sighting tube using the same method of pressing and releasing the needle button. If the axis lid is in your left hand when sighting a directional bearing and you've locked the needle into its new position, make sure that you read the north seeking end of the needle. This is due to the orientation of compass north parallel to and away from the user in this case. If it's easier though for you to have the axis lid in your right hand, when sighting a directional bearing, and you've reset the compass needle. In this case, make sure that you read the south seeking end of the magnetic needle. Now, if an object you're sighting to is significantly above or below your eye height, you can engage the minor axis of the hinge and sight to that object, doing your best to keep the compass face as level as possible and again resetting the needle for a new bearing measurement. If the axis is mounted on a tripod and the compass face is leveled, you can simultaneously measure bearing and vertical angle towards an object. This combines the directional bearing measurement capabilities of the compass face with the angular measurement capabilities of the novel lid protractor. To simultaneously measure bearing and vertical angle to an object, sight that object 
through the siding tube, centering it in that tube. Press and release the needle button three times. Then your directional bearing can be read off of the north seeking end of the needle in this configuration. And your vertical angle can be measured where the top of the compass meets the lid protractor. Believe it or not, using a tripod isn't the default way to measure vertical angles using the axis. When you're out in the field without a tripod, which is usually the case, vertical angles, or inclination, can be measured using the inner clinometer circle and the yellow clinometer needle, which is gravity driven. The best configuration for this is to rotate the lid all the way around into its alternate configuration until the lid touches the base of the compass and then hold the compass face vertical and sight the object you're measuring through the sighting tube. The clinometer needle, since it's gravity driven, will align with whatever angle you're measuring. Again with the axis horizontal or zero is here. Vertical is in these configurations. And for maximum versatility, the clinometer circle goes all the way around. So to sight a vertical angle, look through the tube, center the object, make sure that the compass face is as vertical as possible, and then lock the clinometer needle by pressing and holding the needle button lay the compass face flat and then you can read your vertical angle from the clinometer circle. As a point of clarification, the clinometer of the axis can only be used to measure the vertical angle towards an object. If you need to cite a specific predetermined vertical angle, the tripod configuration can be used where the compass face is leveled, your predetermined angle is set on the lid protractor, and then that angle can be sighted through the siding tube. So that sums up how to measure bearings and vertical angles with the Brunton axis.